Uh, greetings, everyone. Hello to everyone out in Revolution Land. So this is our last webinar of 2020, which has been a year of none of us are ever going to forget. This is during this year, we've redoubled our efforts to bring you the best digital content. And it was under this impetus that the Revolution webinars were created. So before I get started, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in and their support throughout the year. And in particular, thanks to everyone, the brands and the readers that supported our 2020 COVID solidarity auction that raised 280,000 US dollars. Ross, do you remember that auction? I do, yeah, it was a, a, a great moment for us, wasn't it? I think um, uh, a real success and born out of a real genuine desire to do something good in what uh, was panning out to be a, a terrible year. And the amount we raised, the fact that so many brands came on board and made us unique pieces was incredible, um, absolutely incredible. So, yeah, what an amazing uh, achievement. Uh, out of a year that has been uh, or that should be best forgotten, I think, why? Absolutely. And in particular for, you know, everyone that uh, one of our readers and our followers who, who bid on watches or, you know, helped us out in any way to just spread the message. Thank you guys so much. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, at Revolution, we, you know, it's important for us to be an editorial entity, but I think moving forward, it's super important for us to always give back to the community. And uh, that's our commitment, Ross, mine, and everyone at Revolutions. Um, and we want to thank you guys again. So now I'm going to start what has become our traditional greeting. Um, hello, bonjour, ciao ragazzi, shalom, ni hao and Salam Aleikum Habibi. <clears throat> Launched in 2012, Rolex's Skydweller has in its eight-year lifespan become an object of cult collectability and one of the most desirable sports watches around. Jay-Z's got the golden champagne dial model. The notorious one, Conor McGregor, has got the Everose and chocolate dial model. And even Tom Hardy, one of his generation's finest actors, rocks the white gold and ivory dial model. But beyond its obvious wrist swagger, represented by its 42 mm case size and 14 mm case height, which is one of the biggest watches in the Rolex lineup, did you know this watch is the equivalent of a mechanical supercomputer, combining two of horology's most functional complications, the annual calendar and the GMT function? Further, the way the watch has been set up provides an unparalleled legibility and clarity when reading the months, the date, local and home time and using an innovative and totally unique system which combines the crown and the watch's ring command bezel, the Skydweller is also the easiest and most intuitive to use annual calendar around. But before delving into the specifics of how to use, set, and read the Skydweller both as an annual calendar and as a multi-time zone watch, let's first look at the history of these complications. But Ross, you know, one of the questions everyone asks, and it's a question I've asked too, why do you think the watch is called the Skydweller? Interesting question, Way. And uh, whilst it might be an amusing play on the word Sea Dweller, which is the name given to Rolex's famous deep saturation diving watch, the objective of the Sky Dweller is quite different from uh, that to the watch's pragmatic roots. So leading up to the model's launch in 2012, Rolex realised that travel had become an everyday reality for the majority of business people and the tribe of transglobal luxury vagabonds all circumnavigating the earth multiple times a year, guys like yourself, Way. And uh, I think there was uh, an understanding from Rolex that many of us uh, who go through extended stretches waking up each day in a different city, it's our wristwatch that keeps us rooted and orientated um, helping us navigate our way through the adventures that comprise modern life. So what Rolex did with the Skydweller is to create the ultimate companion watch for the modern traveller, a watch that at one glance gives you the perfect reading of time both at home and also where you are at that moment, a watch that gives you a perfect and super visible display for both date and month, and a watch that is so intelligent that it knows which months have 30 days, which months have 31 days and adjust the date for you accordingly. And finally, it's a watch that despite all this incredible ability, is fun, foolproof and totally intuitive to use. So let's welcome everybody to the world of the Rolex Skydweller. Very cool. So let's talk first about the annual calendar. What you need to know is that the Skydweller is simultaneously genius level smart, despite its fun, easygoing affability. If you guys will forgive the analogy, it's like a Mensa qualified supermodel with an IQ of 162 that reads Martin Heidegger in her free time and solves seemingly impossible Euclidean geometry problems while performing Ashtanga inversions in tiny shorts, yet is laid back enough to watch the game and have a beer with you and your boys. Well, that's the sky dweller, stunning to look at and stunning to behold, but also the most pragmatic and useful com complication around. There are four months with 30 instead of 31 days. Those are April, June, September, and November. 
An annual calendar is a watch that automatically calculates which months in the year have 30 days and which months in the year have 31 days. Meaning that as long as you keep it wound, which is relatively easy considering how quickly it's ultra efficient bi-directional loader charges the barrel, you need only correct it once a year on March 1st. So in 2012, Rolex unveiled its first ever annual calendar with the Skydweller. And as always, Rolex pursued the creation of the most reliable, accurate, robust, and easy to use watch on the planet. When it decided to offer its first highly complicated watch, it did so using an all new display that made reading the calendar information incredibly legible. Amazingly, this watch received 14 patents, but supposedly, but I will go into this later, added only four more gear wheels to existing caliber to create the annual calendar and GMT functions, but take that with a grain of salt because Rolex typically likes to underplay its innovation. But Ross, tell us a little bit about the GMT function. Yes, yeah, so no brand has more legitimacy in the category of the GMT watch. In 1954, Rolex created the very first watch with this complication, which they named the GMT Master. This amazing timepiece was created at the request of pilots from, at the time, the world's biggest airline, Pan American World Air Airways, or Pan Am for short. The key features of this timepiece was an additional GMT hand, uh, which was uh, read off a stunning Bakelite bezel that displayed time in 24-hour format. That bezel was subdivided into red and blue sections to differentiate between day and night hours. And most importantly, it could be rotated to show the time in a different time zone. So since then, Rolex has been synonymous with the multiple time zone watch, and most famously recently for the GMT Master 2. Now, the GMT Master 2 um, has the capacity to decouple and advance or retreat the hour hand for a new local time reading without affecting the running of the seconds or the minute. Um, and this is also a feature that makes an appearance in the incredible Skydweller. So we've talked about it a lot. Let's look at the dial of the Skydweller and see how things are laid out. Okay, so guys, first, local time is read off of the hands in the center. Then, reference time or home time is displayed on the 24-hour disc that sits inside of the dial. Notice that a red inverted triangle beneath the Rolex logo always points to the correct home time or reference time. Also note that when local time is that is shown on the hands as well as reference time that is shown on the disc are running together, this becomes a highly pragmatic AM PM indicator. However, the hands can also be top decoupled, as Ross was mentioning, and quick set to a new local time when you travel to a new time zone. Amazingly, this can be done while the second ha second's hand continues to move, which means even as you set a new local time, you won't lose a fraction of a second in accuracy. You want a, a really cool example of Rolex's commitment to detail? Check out the, how the hands are skeletonized. So even when they cover the disc, they never obscure your view of the time for reference time. Now, the great irony in life is, is when you reach a, a point in your life when you can afford a complicated watch, it's usually at an age when your eyesight is no longer optimal. And this is certainly true in my case. Personally, I struggle to read the calendar information on almost all of my watches. Well, all except for the Rolex Skydweller. Why? Because it's a combination of a large date magnified by Rolex's signature Cyclops at three o'clock and a very unique and cool way of displaying the months. But Ross, where are the months, bro? This is this for me is the genius of the watch and it's my favourite element. And so thanks for letting me pick up this section because um, in all other annual calendars, the month is um, always shown either on an aperture uh, with a disc or using a small hand on a sub dial. But on the Rolex Skydweller, you'll notice that on the perimeter of the dial aligning with each hour index, there's a small window. Now, you don't immediately see these because they're galvanically treated the same color as the dial. And uh, so there are 12 uh, hour indexes, which means there are also 12 windows. And each of those windows is used as a month indicator. Uh, and so when the window corresponding to any given month is filled with a contrasting red indication, you know what the month is. So um, let me um, illustrate that uh, quickly. So if it's March, the window at three o'clock uh, the index will be red. And so if it was November, the window next to 11 o'clock index will be red. And um, so um, that's fairly straightforward in terms of uh, understanding it, but a, a serious complication. Now, while in previous dial executions uh, with Rolex and uh, Roman indexes, the windows were slightly wider and rectangular in shape. Uh, with the shift to the baton style markers, the windows for the month indicator of the Skydweller are uh, uniformly square shaped and the contrast 
is red in colour regardless of whichever dial execution or case material you opt for. So by using these unique windows to capitalise on the hour indexes for this double function of both hour and month indicators, Rolex achieved two things. Firstly, they created an extremely legible month indicator. And second, without adding another window or subdial to the center of the dial, Rolex left a very clean, uncluttered design that allowed them to uh, also maximize the visibility of the home time indicator. Yeah. Ross, I totally agree with you. It's such a cool way to display the months and it's so easy to read as well. And for a decrepit old man like myself at the age of 51 with failing eyesight, it's a godsend, sir. So thank you for clearing that up. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about how to set and use a Rolex Skydweller. Well, while most annual calendars necessitate you using a series of pushers around the case, for Rolex, any marring of the signature Oyster case would not be acceptable, as it would mean an added risk and compromise to water resistance. So instead, Rolex devi devised a way to wind, set the date and the month, both backwards and forwards, and set the time and set the main hands to a second time zone all while using just the watch's crown and its ring command bezel. Okay, so let's first talk about the crown. Uh, if you look at the illustration that's just come up, the crown goes to position zero, one, and two. Okay, so basically when the crown is all the way wound in, it's a position zero. When in position zero, uh, your watch is depth rated to 300 meters. Bear in mind that the Sky Dweller is using the famous twin lock crown, which has two gaskets in the tube to provide water resistance. So that means with a 300 meter water resistant watch, you can take your annual calendar probably even scuba diving. And I kind of feel like, you know, uh, next summer, the baller move will be to have a Sky Dweller on the Oyster Flex bracelet with like a matching blinding white Speedo. Um, okay, let's talk about the crown. So you unwind the crown to find position one. In this position, you can turn the crown to wind the barrel, useful primarily if the watch has been sitting around for a long time and has stopped. However, once you start winding the barrel, you don't really have to worry because it has an ultra efficient automatic winding rotor, which will quickly charge the movement once you put it on your wrist. Notice that the watch also has a full 72 hours of power reserve when fully wound. Okay, so how do you set your sky dweller? In order to do that, you'll need to pull the crown out to position two. But before we talk about that, let's talk a little bit back about the 1990s. You know, uh, I was very excited to hear that The Matrix 4 is being uh, filmed soon, right? And one of the things that I, I, I remember about The Matrix was how they used Nokia phones, which I related to not so much because, you know, I thought Nokia phones were brilliant in terms of design, but the great thing about Nokia phones in the 90s was everyone could get them and use them without having to read any of the introductions. Well, uh, any of the instructions. So, well, there's only one better example of the understanding the, the intuitive way in which the human mind works. And to me, that is the Rolex Skydweller. And this is the genius of Rolex in its capacity to take complex mechanisms like a watch with both a GMT indication as well as a mighty annual calendar and make them so relatable and easy to use that they're genuinely fun to play around with. One huge factor to this is when Rolex engineers any kind of watch, they go out of their way to ensure that those watches are impossible to use incorrectly, which incidentally is not the truth for the vast majority of watches. One an example, did you know that in most watches when you're changing the date, if you try to set the date close to midnight when it's changing over, the movements can get jammed. In contrast, you can set a Rolex date just at any time and you can even wind the hands backwards and the date will follow through the midnight threshold to the day previous as well. Similarly, the Rolex Sky Dweller is simple, easy and fun to use and here's how you do it. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you're setting your sky dweller is turn the ring command bezel all the way counterclockwise. To be precise, that's three clicks to the left, which will put you in position number three. Now with the crown pulled out all the way, and as I mentioned before, you're in position two, you're going to set the reference time. So to set the reference time, you do so with the 24 hour reference time display in the center of the dial. Note that the inverted red triangle will point out the correct hour and all, that you will need to distinguish between day and night hours. So 10 a.m. is 10 o'clock while 10 p.m. is 22. To set the, the minute, you use the main minute hand of the watch. Also notice that in this mode, the seconds hand of the watch is, all, is stopped, allowing you to set the time precisely. This is the only position where the, you can hack the seconds. And in any other position, that is to set the local time or setting the date, you wouldn't want it to. So I think that's kind of the beauty of Rolex already thought of every possible uh, vulnerability in the watch and it made it basically foolproof. But Ross, tell us how you set the local time. Okay, so, uh, so now that your reference or home time is set, you need to turn the ring command bezel one click to the right. So to position two. 
Here you can move the hour hand either backwards or forwards without disturbing the running of the watch. In this mode, the seconds and minute hands continue to run. And this is so that later, if you want to set a new local time when you are traveling, you can do so without affecting the watch's underlying timekeeping pre precision. So again, it's role it's getting into the nitty gritty and detail, which is, uh, which is brilliant and what we would always expect from them. Okay, what you want to do and uh, now, um, when not traveling, is move the hour hand so that it is in sync with the reference time on the 24 hour disc. This is the important part. You need to distinguish between AM and PM, which you do by noticing if the date changes when you cross 12 o'clock. If it does, you're in the AM hours. If it doesn't, you're in the PM hours. Pretty simple, don't worry. Um, because the date switches over because uh, we'll be saying that next. So, Wei, talk to us now about the date and month. Absolutely, sir. So now that you have your local time and reference time synchronized, you need to adjust the date and month. So you turn the ring command bezel one more click to the right to find position number one. Now by turning the crown, you can advance a date forward or backwards. Note that the month, which is represented by the red indicator in the box next to any of the hour indexes follows a date forwards or backwards. Just try turning from November 30th to December 1st and you'll see what I mean. Now turn the date backwards from the 1st of December to the 30th of November. And you'll see that the red indicator jumps from the box at 12 o'clock, which was December to the box at 11 o'clock, which is November. Note that the watch will still cycle through the 31st in this mode so there is no 31st of november but it will still cycle through it but don't worry because once you push the crown back in the annual calendar mechanism is reactivated and it's actually really fun to play around with this and it's impossible to damage the watch by turning it too far backwards or forwards and again that's the beauty of rolex ross but tell us you know how you would use it as a gmt watch okay so um let's take a look at how you would use this if you were traveling okay so let's use the example that you're traveling from paris to london um, before you disembark from the plane you can adjust the time backwards um, or earlier by an hour um, and that this is and it's actually very simple to do that now i know way that you are absolutely adamant that disembarking from the plane you've got to be first off the plane first at depart at arrivals and so for you um, this watch is perfect because it's simple you can get it done quickly you've not got to think too much about it okay so say you're traveling then from singapore to london then you would just um adjust the time backwards by seven hours in either case you just need to put the ring command bezel back into position two unscrew and pull out the crown and give it the right amount of turns okay and then what if you realize that because of the nature of the time zones you're in you've arrived in the country a previous day that means the date on your watch is wrong Okay, so all you need to do that is um, to adjust, you turn the ring command bezel to position one and use the crown to adjust the day. Okay, well, let's talk about what position to leave the bezel in because once all the timekeeping and calendar information is correctly set, set, you can screw the crown back in. And then regarding the position of the bezel, you can either restore it to what I consider the default neutral position or position uh, zero which is all the way uh, to the far right or uh, clockwise three clicks. But the fun thing to do with the Sky Dweller is the more you play around with it, the better you get at using it. The beauty of the Sky Dweller is even if you're sitting on the couch and you wanna do a virtual trip around the world, which let's face it, most of us are doing this year, or just you like looking at the windows for the months changing over, uh, you can feel free to change the hands and indicators as much as you like. The great thing about the Sky Dweller is the more you use it, the more fun it gets. Um, and you'll learn to automatically put the ring command bezel in the position that best suits your needs. For example, if you're getting ready to travel and you can, you can already set it two clicks to the left position too. As Ross was mentioning, I like to be the first one out of the plane. And this allows you to immediately access a GMT function as soon as you get off the plane and you're ready to rock. Finally, as mentioned, if you need to adjust just the date, um, for example, on that one day a year that you actually need to adjust the watch on March 1st, you can just turn the bezel one click to the, to the left from its neutral position to position one, and you can immediately advance the date without disturbing the timekeeping. But Ross, let's talk a little bit about the construction of the Sky Dweller. Tell us about the case. Yeah, well, Way, I've said this many times. To me, the, uh, the Oyster case is one of the most beautiful and maybe perfect aesthetic designs of the 20th century, and it's uh, as cool uh, in the 19, uh, as cool now in 2020 as it was in the 30s, 40s, 50s, the, whole of its life in fact and um, an actual fact um, the Sky Dweller is uh, the most complex case ever created by Rolex but 
it's still got that descended look um, from the 1920s. Now, the oyster case essentially comprises of three key components, the screw down crown, the screw down case back. And um, you, when you look at the case back on an oyster case, you can see a very distinctive pattern on the case back edge. And that's uh, to allow the special tool that uh, Rolex used to grip the case to unlock it and lock it back into place. And then um, early on in the oysters, uh, development the screw down bezel as well it's now a, a flush fit that pushes on but um the original the unique fluting on the bezel was also um for a tool to be able to remove that and to lock it in place i, I think you mentioned this earlier way the the the, the sky dweller is actually in a 42 millimeter case um and again that allows it to you know optimize visibility for the wearer so let's place this within the context that Rolex has always got an objective to create the easiest to use and most intuitive watches. It's also important that functions can be activated uh, whilst ensuring that the watch is completely safe from being damaged. The more complicated a watch becomes, the more fragile it is in general. However, when Rolex decided to create its first annual calendar watch, it knew it had to create an intuitive way of setting all the information in a watch that couldn't damage the movement no matter how it was set. Part of this was the use of gear wheels for all the calendar information, which means that they can be set backwards and forwards with ease. However, while testing various ways to array the setting functions, Rolex ended up using the unique ring command bezel. So let's look maybe in a bit more detail about the ring command wear. Absolutely. But quick wrist check. What are you wearing on your wrist, uh, Ross? Oh, I'm, uh, of course, wearing the yellow Oyster Perpetual 36. This year's smash hit for me. I love that watch. And I love the fact that people are calling, well, I think it was primarily Eric Koo that's calling it the Pikachu. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, love that I've uh, I have the, uh, the Black Bay BB58 uh, Navy, which I have to say is absolutely smashing it as well. Yeah, awesome. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Quick wrist check over. Um, but I knew you guys were going to ask. So let's talk about the ring command bezel. Uh, it is impossible to understate how significant an innovation the ring command bezel is for Rolex. What's great about the ring command bezel is that while appearing exactly like any Oyster Perpetual Datejust with its distinct fluted bezel, this element opens the door to a whole new world of complications at Rolex. The first Rolex with a ring command bezel was the Yatmaster II, launched back in 2007. In this watch, a bright blue serochrome bezel could be, be turned one position to the left in order to access the regatta countdown function. Using the crown, you could adjust the number of minutes for the countdown up to 10 minutes because this varied from race to race, which I have to say, Ross, I love because that's gotta be like, you know, and I bear in mind, I love this watch, but it's gotta be like the whitest watch ever like created, right? <laughs> like I just see like dudes hanging out at a yacht club and they're like, skip, I don't know what to do. They've just changed the countdown function from five minutes to four and, and our watches are not calibrated and skip would be like, fear not Winthrop. You know, my Yachtmaster 2 allows me to adjust the countdown to any number of minutes I would like um, up to 10 minutes. But regardless, I think it's a super dope watch. And it also um, allowed Rolex to see the pragmatic advantages of the ring command bezel, which can turn a full 360 degrees and thus could theoretically offer setting positions for a vast number of complications. Now, while the ring command bezel seems like a simple and elegant solution, it is actually belied by a vast amount of technical innovation and comprises a 60 part module involving both a planetary gearing system and a column wheel, which is activated when the crown is pulled out. I somehow find it fitting that in even the most accessibly priced sky dwellers, which the, with the oyster steel case, the bezel is always still made of gold that is, as it underscores how epically valuable the bezel is from a functional perspective. Ross, tell us a little bit more about these amazing steel and gold models. Yeah, so let's talk about the 2017 uh, roller saw watches. So it's important to uh, always remember that the alloys uh, for Rolex watch cases uh, are cast in-house by, by Rolex. And there are two materials that are used to create the watches for the Sky Dweller, uh, both gold and steel. So in 2017, Rolex unveiled a Sky Dweller in Roller Saw, which is Rolex's term for a combination of steel and gold, or as collectors sometimes refer to the watch as two-tone. There were actually two variations on the Roller Saw theme for the Sky Dweller. Uh, the first was a steel case with yellow gold bezel, crown and center links in the bracelet and um, this model featured champagne white and black dials 
The second model featured a steel case with a white gold bezel. And this second model was a considerable value proposition at um, $14,400 US dollars, which was a third the price of the original model in full gold. And uh, now this um, steel and white gold uh, was offered in uh, with white, blue and black dials. Now we should uh, maybe just take a moment here to talk about the, the steel that Rolex use and specifically their proprietary uh, steel that they have called oyster steel. Uh, most brands in the industry use the uh, standard 316L stainless steel, but it's only Rolex that use 904L stainless steel. So the question is, what is 904L? What does it mean? How is it distinguished from 316? Well, it features a much higher corrosion resistance as well as a higher surface hardness uh, than 316. And since its inception, the tradition at Rolex has always been to research the way their watches wear over time. And they found that with hard use, their sports watches, like other um, models made from traditional stainless steel, would from time to time experience corrosion, uh, often in the threads of the case back and the case back itself, because of the buildup of sweat and moisture. 904L was uh, selected as a new material because of its resistance to acids and uh, its greater surface hardness has not only improved the resistance of the cases, but it also enabled them to be polished to a, a much greater luster. 904L steel um, is received by Rolex. Um, they scan it then with an electron microscope to try and detect any imperfections, including any structural or surface defects. After inspection, the steel is then remelted in a vacuum to purify it and remove inclusions that would compromise its corrosion resistance. So we can see here that Rolex's focus is on creating watches that would endure forever. And I guess the question could be asked, why don't other brands use 904L? Well, because it's much harder to machine and requires special tools to do so. And uh, interestingly, way by 2003, all Rolex steel watches uh, we're using the 904L based oyster steel. Um, and then, of course, another important um, metal for Rolex is Everose. And I know you're going to talk about that now. Eh? Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Ross. And indeed, I am. So, as mentioned, all gold watches at Rolex are made from alloys that are cast in house at Rolex's Planley Watt facility. And I've had the opportunity to visit. And I can say that it's sincerely awesome to witness the foundry melting gold down before it's mixed to create their signature alloys. So the thing to know is gold watches are not pure 24 karat gold. This would render the cases too soft to be pragmatic. At Rolex, gold watches are 18 karat, which means a minimum of 70%, sorry, excuse me, 75% pure gold. In 2005, Rolex took the step to create their very own red gold alloy called Everose. Why? Because they discovered that over time, traditional red gold starts to lose its color and ends up looking quite similar to yellow gold. As with the creation of serochrome bezel inserts, it is clear that Rolex likes their watches to endure forever. And so Rolex set about creating an alloy of red gold that would never fade in color, intensity, or hue over time. Traditional red gold is made by combining gold with copper and silver. However, Rolex Everose is created with 76% gold, at least 2% of platinum, and with the remaining copper. And if you thought that Rolex would reveal the exact recipe to you, you don't know Rolex. The first watch to receive an Everose case was the Daytona in 2005. Still one of the sickest watches of all time. Would you agree, Ross? Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, just a brilliant looking watch. Awesome. So stunning. Uh, and one of the most beautiful executions of the Skydweller is with an Everose case. As of this year, that watch comes on both a matching Everose bracelet with dials in bronze, white, and gray, and on the ultra cool rubber oyster flex bracelet, which brings an added sporty dimension to the Skydweller. The combination of an Everose case with an Oyster Flex bracelet is available in all three color dials as well. So, but Ross, tell us a little bit about the, the metal bracelets as well as the Oyster Flex bracelet. Yeah, certainly. So since its introduction, the Sky Dweller has uh, always been fitted with an Oyster bracelet. And now interestingly, and this is a really um, important element of this bracelet to me, and I think to many people, is the Easy Link extension system that allows you to add five millimeters um, in size to the bracelet for additional comfort. Now, this doesn't sound like a lot, but um, and we were talking about this the other day, way um, when we were yeah. when we were preparing this um, about how a person's wrist swells throughout the day. And um, for me, currently in the UK. 
um, I am, uh, it's very cold and it's when I'm outside, my wrist constricts and I come into the house, the central heating's on, my wrist is swollen. And so genuinely the easy link um, is very, very useful for that. And similarly, I guess for you in Singapore, it's very, very hot outside and you spend most of your time when you're going into um, cold buildings, your wrist constricts. And so it's a small thing, but actually on the um, modern Rolex brace, oyster bracelet, the easy link is a, a superb addition. And so it does, it offers a, a significant amount of relief uh, to a watch that if it's feeling uh, perfectly fitting in the morning over the day, it's going to change. And, um, and it, it, it's concealed perfectly in the clasp and it's, you know, a 10 second job to just unclip it and give yourself a bit more breathing space in your, in your bracelet. Also, the Oyster, Oyster Flex. Um, now, visually, Rolex's Oyster Flex bracelet looks like a simple rubber strap, but in reality, it's actually far more complex. The idea was this. Rubber straps, while practical for sports, tend to lack any real structure, causing watches that are fitted with them to move around a lot. Um, and the Oyster Flex addresses this issue perfectly. The bracelet starts as thin, flexible blades of titanium nickel alloy, um, and then they are overmolded with a special black elastomer, which gives the appearance of a rubber strap. But actually, in reality and in, in, in truth, they're actually bracelets with a, a, a proper built upon structure. And for added comfort and air circulation, Rolex has even added longitudinal cushions into the strap. Um, and I think the result is basically the perfect rubber bracelet. Now, all Oyster Flex, Oyster Flex bracelets feature the Glide Lock technology, uh, which again allows you to find uh, adjust the bracelet size by increments of two and a half millimeter for a total of 15 millimeters. And um, again, always thinking about the small details to reduce wear on this gold, on the gold Glide Lock bracelets, you'll find ceramic inserts for the teeth. Uh, the fine adjusting system. And so as, as of this year, the Sky Dweller in gold now comes with the option of the Oyster Flex bracelet. Uh, so that is the yellow gold watches with dials in champagne and gray and the Everose watches with bronze, white and gray dials. Um, but it's uh, been great to talk about the in outside of the watch, but tell us a bit more about the inside of it, Way what, what makes it tick. You're very kind, Ross. You know I love movements, and so uh, I've been dying to get to this bit. So let's talk about the Caliber 9001. So when the Sky Dweller was unveiled in 2012, watch aficionados were desperate to understand how the movement functioned. We were told that the entire annual calendar system comprised of just four more wheels, which of course was typical Rolex understatement. Because in truth, the Caliber 9001 powering the Sky Dweller was the single most complex movement they had ever created, comprising of 380 parts and holding 14 patents. The annual calendar mechanism is driven by what Rolex calls the Saros system, S-A-R-O-S. Saros is the Greek word for the astronomical cycle of the eclipse seen on Earth. It involves, of course, the movement of the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon. Similarly, in the Saros planetary gearing system, there are three main parts. There is a satellite wheel for the date, there is a planetary wheel for the months, and there is a second satellite wheel for the months that have 30 days. I'll say that again. Main satellite wheel for the date, planetary wheel for the months, and a second satellite wheel for the months that have 30 days. So this is how Rolex's incredible Saros annual calendar works. A satellite wheel engages a fixed planetary wheel over one month. This satellite wheel is driven by the date disk. This satellite wheel also is engaged with a second satellite wheel that has four fingers. Each of these four fingers corresponds to the four months that have 30 days. As we had mentioned earlier, April, June, September, and November, or four, six, nine, and 11 when displayed on the Sky Dweller. At the stroke of midnight on the 30th of any of these months, these four months, this finger flicks the date that's a change over two days, which to the eye appears as if the 30th of the, of the month is transitioning directly to the first because it happens so quickly. And I think that's really cool. But Ross, tell us about the reliability of the 9001. What has Rolex done to assure that? Thanks, Way. Yeah, so as with all Rolex movements, despite its complexity, the Caliber 9001 is built to offer the best performance in terms of accuracy, reliability, and shock resistance. Accordingly, it uses a free-sprung microstellar balance wheel. Uh, the balance wheel is fitted to a blue parachrome hairspring made from niobium, zirconium, and oxygen. Um, and it's not affected by magnetism, and it's 10 times more shock-resistant than a traditional metal balance spring. 
Okay, so the balance is mounted on a staff that is held in place by jewels fitted with Rolex para-shock anti-shock devices that are up to 50% more shock resistant than traditional devices. The balance is held on a full traversing balance bridge, which offers greater stability than a balance cot. And the balance bridge features a special screw to raise or lower the balance for perfect engagement with the escapement. The rotor is mounted on a ceramic ball bearing for ultra efficient winding and the movement beats at 4 hertz or 28,800 VPH. Now, like all Rolex movements, uh, the Sky Dweller are the Sky Dweller movements are first sent to Cosk for certification as chronometers. Now, Rolex is the only one of uh, three watch brands that undergoes a double certification process. So, the movements are sent to Cosk facilities in Beale uh, and Saint Imier. They're tested for a total of fifteen days in five positions with three temperature variations and must stay within a maximum deviation of minus four to plus six seconds a day. Once the movements pass, they are then sent back to Rolex with their certificates and uh, the watches are cased or the movements are cased. And then these complete watches are tested again to Rolex's standards, which are uh, a tolerance of minus two to plus two seconds per day. And since 2015, 100% of Rolex movements uh, are tested in this way. So, way there we have it, the Sky Dweller, uh, which is joined this year by versions on Rolex's Epic Oyster Flex bracelet. Uh, it's a watch that's designed as the ultimate companion piece for the global traveller. But by making their watch so much fun, easy to use and totally bomb-proof, it's actually a watch that is relevant to everyone, even, for example, in a year where no one travelled. Uh, it's a complicated watch, but one that is user-friendly, reliable, and let's not forget, Damn good luck in. In other words, it's a Rolex. Absolutely, Ross. Uh, it is a Rolex, and it is with Rolex that we finalize our year of 2020 in terms of our webinars. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. So uh, I guess now we should ask if anyone has a question. Um, the question being asked for you, or two women, uh, the, the wear large. So Ross, the question is at 42 mm, does the uh, the Sky Dweller wear large? Um, I would say it's not an insubstantial watch, but I would say it's proportioned really correctly. You know, the thing is, and I understand that uh, from a global perspective, watch sizes are moving back to, you know, kind of what is perceived to be the classic proportion, somewhere between 37 and 40. But the thing is, bear in mind that this is an annual calendar. And for guys like myself, if it was any smaller, you know, as I mentioned before, I have failing old man eyesight it would be impossible for me to read. So I think that Rolex understood this and wanted to you know, enhance the visibility. On the wrist, it's not a small watch, it's a pretty substantial watch, but as I said, it's perfectly proportioned. And the great thing about Rolex is, the, is that they always feel good on the wrist. Um, yeah, Ross, what's your, what's your feeling about the Sky Dweller in terms of how it wears, man? Yeah, I think it, it was well. I mean, I particularly felt um, this year on the Oyster Flex, it was particularly comfortable and didn't feel bulky in any way it felt quite quite sleek on the wrist and yeah i mean it's a it's a watch that packs a lot of punch um because it's very it's complicated and it needs to be clear i think any smaller and it might um yeah it might not work as well is my feeling on it I will say that the addition of the, the watches on an Ice Reflex bracelet kind of gives a little a different vibe to it. You know what I mean? So rather than having, you know, the substance, which a lot of people like of a full metal bracelet, um, to have it on, um, on the rubber bracelet kind of makes it a little bit more low key, even though the watches are in gold. Um, and it makes it a little bit lighter as well. Uh, so I would say, yeah, check that out too. If you're in the market for a gold watch, check that out too, because it's a great looking watch. And as I said, works super well with a blinding white Speedo for your, uh, your summer in 2021. So it, anything else? Um, so the other one is, uh, everyone's asking if you guys, if the both of you were to pick a sky dweller for yourselves, which one would it be? Oh, okay. So uh, Ross, the question is, if you were to pick out a sky dweller for yourself, which one would it be? Okay, so for me, you know, I know everyone's, you know, is chasing the, um, the steel watch or the Rolosaur watch with the uh, steel case and the white gold bezel and with the blue dial or maybe the black dial. For me, I would just go all the way. I want full freaking Everose with a champagne dial, bro. You know, I would say it's a toss up between having it on the Oyster Flex bracelet, but on the full gold bracelet, probably for me as I'm a bit of a maximalist, 
Uh, and because aesthetically people, you know, correctly have associated me with, uh, with Leslie Chow from the character of The Hangover and his kind of his, his affection for gold, um, I would probably go with the, the Ever Rose uh, model. Ross, which would you go for, sir? Well, you, you know me, Way. I, I, I kind of, I'm a man of two extremes. I like old steel oyster cased watches. I, I, I've got a love for old uh, vintage steel watches. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I've got this deep, um, deep passion for totally blinged out gold watches. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think probably the, the pragmatist in me would go for, would go down the classic, as you mentioned, the classic safe option of steel with blue dial and white gold bezel. But then there's part of me that would want to rock Ever Rose on uh, on Black Oyster Flats as well. So I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm betwixt in between. If I had to choose, do you know what? I'll go for the Ever Rose on Oyster on Oyster Flex. Nice, nice, very nice. Uh, question: As opposed to chasing uh, GMT's, uh, the GMT Master tunes and the Daytona's. Why is the Sky Dweller is not as so I would beg to differ, actually. Like, I, I've, I've been trying to buy a Sky Dweller for some time, and it's not that easy. Um, no, I, I don't know what it's like in, in your, your market, uh, but at least in Singapore, where I am, they're completely sold out. Like, so it's, it's pretty, it's, it's a really tough watch to get, not just in the, you know, the kind of the models that everyone's chasing, which are the steel ones with the, uh, um, the white gold bezel and the blue, black or, or white dial, every one of which is dope. But even a lot of the gold models are sold out as well. Right. I mean, we had actually wanted to have watches for you to play with this evening, but there weren't none. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I, yes, I guess they, it's a global issue that Rolex is having. Basically everyone wants all of their watches. Right. Last question is um, thoughts on the on the Oyster bracelet, Oyster Flex bracelet. Yeah. Uh, so Ross, maybe you take this one. What's your thinking on the Oyster Flex bracelet? You like it? Yeah, I think it's brilliant. Um, I think rubber straps have become really popular over the past ten years. I've I've seen that, um, and there are many brands that make rubber straps, but for me, Oyster Flex just works because of the comfort and the way that it holds the watch on your wrist. And that's, you know, we, I mentioned this earlier. The problem is when you wear a, a, a watch, particularly a heavier head on a rubber strap, it moves around and it's difficult to wear sometimes. As the Oyster Flex, because of the nature of its construction and the blades within it, and it's, a, again, a typically Rolex, a very small but very important detail of those um, two uh, long blades underneath act as a cushion the whole thing just sits on the wrist really well so for me it's like a massive innovation and i'm a big yeah, fan i'm a big fan I, I totally agree dude um i would say you know i think we've rubber straps are like they're cool to have on a lot of watches but watches where it's just basically a piece of rubber you you either have to cinch them super tight especially if it's a heavy watch for it to not shift around or if you need a bit of comfort because they get they don't breathe right so your your wrist gets kind of hot or sweaty you have to you know um relax or loosen the strap and then it has a tendency to swim around your wrist. So I think what's amazing is that when they did Oyster Flex, they actually made it, as you were saying, with those titanium um, nickel inserts. So it's got the structure. And then on top of that, I think you'd mentioned, um, Ross, it's got these like longitudinal cushions, which creates like a channel for airflow. So it's, it's like, it's a completely different animal from your normal rubber strap. And I think if you guys haven't tried one, um, go try it out. It's also dope on the Daytona as well, right? Yeah, right. It, it makes a massive difference. So if you're wearing white gold or yellow gold Daytona, and um, for many years they were available with um, leather straps and, and, and still are, uh, when you wear the same watch on leather and then you try it on Oyster Flex, the difference of the way the watch sits on your wrist and it doesn't move, it doesn't slide around. Um, yeah, it does make a big difference because particularly on the precious metal, it's, um, it's heavy. And so it takes some holding in place and the yeah, Oyster Flex, they seem to have come up with a really great solution for that. So yeah, I'm a big fan. Amazing. Anything else on it? So I guess that's it, guys. Uh, did, we, did we get Matthew Lopez? He's got his hand raised. Yeah, we, we got him? Okay. All right, Matthew, we got you. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much um, for everyone that uh, tuned in. And again, um, everyone that's tuned in the whole year where we've been doing these webinars. And it looks like next year we're going to be doing a digital Watches and Wonders uh, and also what used to be Basel, you know, um, as well. So tune in for that. Uh, but we're going to be uh, bringing you tons of content. We love um, doing these videos. 
We love doing webinars for you guys. Um, we got to find out a way to get a little bit more audience participation going as well, just in terms of it'd be great to have like bubbles where people could pop up and like talk and like, you know, show us their watches. Um, but that's it. Uh, uh, Ross, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for the people uh, from Rolex who, you know, uh, helped us with all the research for this. Thank you also. And thank you for also making such dope watches this year. The OPs, they rock. Uh, and that's it. I want to wish everyone uh, a mer very Merry Christmas and a great New Year. Ross, would you like to share any seasonal greeting? Yeah, just um, thanks everybody for your, for your support this year. Um, it's been a crazy year, so everybody just take some time out, try and recharge the batteries, reset, recharge, and let's uh, get let's come back in the new year and uh, take 2020 on. Absolutely. And guys, I can't wait to see all of you in person next year once I'm vaccinated. Uh, like I'm, anyone that comes up to me and wants a Negroni, I'm going to have one with you. All right, so thank you very much. Peace. And... Um, it's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you.